Tonight, a wanted suspect sparks a major police search in Port Pirie. And serious concerns raised about the safety of nurses at the Wyler Hospital. From our seven Spencer Golf Studios, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening. A section of Port Perry was blocked off yesterday afternoon as police searched for a wanted man. Patrols combing businesses along three chain road for leads, with the SES also assisting. Shari Hams has more. Police were out in full force with officers located at the end of each street on the corner of Three Chain and Main Road as they desperately searched for the wanted suspect. Business owners were asked if officers could check their properties, including some storage sheds, search both inside and out. No stone was left unturned with patrols cornering off some streets, including Wilkins Street where vehicle access was blocked off. After an hour of searching, authorities tried a different approach, calling in state emergency service crews who sent a drone into the sky. However, there was no luck with the wanted man escaping authorities and feared to have potentially left town. In a statement to Seven Spencer Golf, Saypol says officers searched the area for around two hours and the suspect was not located. He is not considered a danger to the public and police have been following positive lines of inquiry. But business owners were left surprised with an end to the day they did not expect. Anyone with information on the wanted man is being urged to contact Crime Stoppers. The Australian Nursing and Midwifery Federation is calling for more safety measures and trained security at the Wyler Hospital. It follows an increasing number of reports of violence against nurses this year. Fed up and wanting a solution. That's the response from nurses at the Wyala Hospital turning to the South Australian Nursing and Midwifery Federation for help. The union says it's a concerning situation. We have uh, people reporting to us every day that they feel really anxious about arriving to work. They don't feel like uh, adequate measures are in place to keep them safe. The Federation says violence against nurses at the hospital is increasing, with numerous assaults reported this year. We have heard reports of um, staff at the hospital being punched, being bitten, uh, that numerous injuries have been sustained. In a statement, the Flinders and Upper North Local Health Network CEO, Craig Packard, said as staff are trained in management of aggression and highly skilled in preventing and responding to challenging behaviour. Mr Packard also says as well as being supported by additional trained staff, a prevention response committee is also being established. But the member for Giles says the hospital needs more security. It's time for urgent action. It's time that the minister appointed dedicated security guards at our major regional hospitals. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. A donation box at Broken Hill's line of load has allegedly been broken into on Tuesday night. The money collected is used to maintain the town's iconic facility. A spokesperson for Crown Lands described the behaviour as disappointing, saying the box is emptied by staff regularly and usually contains only a small amount of money. Nearby security vision has been handed to police. The damaged box will need to be replaced and will include a reinforced locking system. Parts of the region copped a soaking today, with Port Lincoln recording six mils in the gauge by midday. With more wet weather on the way, authorities are warning locals to take extra care on the roads during the conditions. The daunting clouds rolled in thick and fast as Port Lincoln's skyline disappeared. Streets overwhelmed by water, while gutters began to overflow. Port Lincoln recording 12mm in the gauge this afternoon, while Cummins had a battering with 19mm. Just be mindful of uh, slippery roads, uh, a lot of water on the roads, uh, as well as their gutters as well for houses, just to make sure that those are clean and clear. The dark clouds lingering around parts of the region for most of the day. Stenhouse Bay on York Peninsula getting a soaking with 18mm, while Point Avoid near Coffin Bay had 15 
staying very uh, cool for this time of year as well uh, and, and conditions becoming windier during Friday. The wild weather expected to pick up overnight as a low pressure trough moves across the region. As far as the roads, be mindful of uh, falling trees, the wet weather and some wind is, is possible. Uh, from there on, uh, just make sure your car's not parked under any trees, tie down any loose items. This afternoon we'll probably issue a, a, a severe weather warning for the potential for, for damaging wind, uh, and that will include most of Air Peninsula, most of York Peninsula as well. Nathan Reg to 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, Broken Hills Health District ramps up border screenings with Victoria and Port Lincoln's tuna industry encounters a rough fishing season. Welcome back. Local health authorities have ramped up border screenings after a security guard in Melbourne contracted COVID-19. The latest hotel quarantine leak coming as Australia doubles its supply of Pfizer vaccines and Broken Hill's rollout strategy becomes clearer. The second case of a Medi Hotel worker contracting the virus this week. A reminder we can never truly let our guard down. It is out there. You could be next. Um, and, um, and just assume that you might be the next person. While South Australia and New South Wales aren't closing their borders yet, those from Melbourne will now come under greater scrutiny. Travellers entering SA from Greater Melbourne will need to be tested on days 1, 5 and 12 and will need to isolate after their first test until they return a negative result. This is an area of concern. Uh, we do need to be alert. We don't need to be alarmed. While New South Wales began screening airport arrivals this morning, anyone who has visited a site of concern in Victoria should isolate for 14 days. It comes as the federal government today secured 10 million extra doses of the Pfizer vaccine. The rollout plan for Broken Hill also becoming clearer. We expect really around mid-March, really mid, mid to late March, that we'll see it rolling, rolling into um, our community. One of the concerns among locals is the use of vaccine hubs, but it won't mean Broken Hill residents will miss out on the first rollout. Vaccines will be transported here from Dubbo. Rest assured that everybody will be um, um, getting vaccine in time. Lachlan Eater, 7 Spencer Golf News. Urgent sampling is underway after a red alert was issued for blue-green algae in the Lower Darling. Locals say it's further proof that the resumption of flow policy isn't improving water health. Where does that leave you in 12 months' time? We're, we're in a worse situation 12 months out than fish deals from what we were you know, back in 18, at the start of 18. The river looks worse than that. People are being told to avoid contact with the water between Menindee Lakes and Batundi and seek medical attention should they become ill. Port Lincoln's tuna industry is bracing for another tough year, with slumping sale prices and cooler water conditions making it harder to find fish. Companies are now banding together to help keep each other afloat. A dark cloud hanging over Port Lincoln's tuna industry. The mood amongst the companies is a bit grim at the moment. The COVID pandemic, a slump in overseas sales and recent scarcity of fish causing headaches for the multi-million dollar industry. It's going to be tough, but we always knew it would be. Cooler than usual water conditions creating bigger areas for fish to be in, making it harder to find. To add insult to injury, sales to Japan have nosedived by nearly 20% due to the pandemic, with a forecast looking eerie. 2021 is not going to be an easier year at all. It's still going to be a hard year for the tuna farming companies. Hoping to weather the storm, three companies have united together. And with overseas sales plummeting for us, it's been a real eye-opener and we've realised that there's a market out there that we should expand to. Blaslov Steer and Dinko Tuna Farmers creating Kin Seafood, helping drive down production costs and keep each other afloat in these challenging waters. The domestic market's been undersupplied and under promoted for a whole for a number of years so you know this is a great initiative by them in tough times you need to learn to reduce the costs nathan regter seven spencer golf news it'll be a long night for many filmmakers with submissions for the perfect light film festival closing tomorrow 
Organizers say they're impressed by what they've seen so far, with locals encouraged to showcase their movie-making skills. Last minute cutting before the cut off tomorrow night. Broken Hills filmmakers have just under 24 hours to put the finishing touches on their work. Get the skates on and get it in. Because there's a thousand bucks first prize to be won, 750 for second and 500 for third. Organisers say submissions to this year's Perfect Light Film Festival have so far been top class. I've, I've started looking at entries and there's some beauties there. I can't give too much away, but I can say that we're going to have an amazing program of film. The 12 shortlisted films will be shown on the big screen in March, with a screening of Firestarter, the story of Bangara, to kick off the weekend. The thing we loved the most was our culture and was feeding that through a contemporary expression. Among those putting the finishing touches to their films, former news reporter Patrick Reinke, swapping the small screen for the silver screen. It's about a guy who is so addicted to playing his video games that it starts taking his reality over and he starts acting like the characters he's playing in these games. And it's never been easier for first timers. You can put your phone in, you can put a microphone on top, you can put a light on top and all of a sudden you've got a mobile little filming kit. Lachlan Eater, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us, a new reading group begins in Port Augusta and Port Perry's library teaching pensioners how to be tech savvy. Technology savvy senior sessions will soon begin in Port Perry. Elderly residents are being encouraged to come along to the free forums held at the local library. Organisers say there will be a COVID-19 focus, with new check-in technology sometimes confusing for older generations. More things about uh, QR codes and video conferencing and um, a lot of your usual stuff, which is the uh, mobile phones, tablets, PC computers. More information on the course can be found at Port Perry's library. Paint Port Augusta Red launched today with a combined playgroup at the Eastside Foreshore. The program is aiming to encourage reading to children from birth, with today's event also featuring a special present. Turning the page on a new initiative in Port Augusta. Paint Port Augusta Red is a nationwide early literacy community program encouraging reading, talking, singing and playing with children from birth is a real opportunity for uh, community groups, the parents, all to come together and promote early literacy. Laying the foundation for language development, experts say reading helps form and strengthen brain connections. The program aimed at preparing children to read and write before they step into the classroom. A large percentage of um, brain development happens in those first three years, so um, by starting early um, it gives them a head start once they get to school. I think they just absorb so much at this age and it really helps with vocabulary when they're getting older um, and it's a nice time together as well to read stories. My daughter at seven months really enjoys a story and we read to her every day. Today marking the start of a new chapter, with children embarking on a scavenger hunt to find one very special egg. We're going to encourage the kids to actually read to the egg um, and it will grow over time um, until it hatches into our reading mascot later in the year. Katrina Musson, 7 Spencer Golf News. Residents living at Wyala's Eureka Mile Place are now receiving cheaper power. The retirement village recently installing 250 new solar panels to help cut costs. Resident Jeffrey Woodland says his electricity bill has gone from $5 to just $2 a day. Very, very good. It's marvellous. The residents are really excited with their bills. They're coming to me just, yeah, can't believe how cheap their bills have been. The panels are being installed at all facilities across Australia. Port Augusta's Platform Gallery is back and gearing up for a new year of local art and craft. Members also introducing a new workshop, hoping to get families and visitors engaged with the art space. The flags are out, helping bring in a new year at the Platform Gallery. We have a plan for the year and our program is going to include um, exhibitions by our local members and visitors as well, as well as later in the year 
the brush with art. From acrylic pores to still life paintings, abstract art to these design fabrics. The gallery features a rotation of new exhibitions and a wide array of local art displays. With some new members on board, they say they are looking forward to the start of a new hands-on workshop. We're just going to have a, a potluck art or craft activity with a host for the morning and the host will actually uh, show people how to get involved with different skills and artworks. The free workshop held every third Saturday of the month, aiming to broaden the creative mind and open eyes to the various art forms. I'm teaching um, polymer clay pens and I'm also going to do knitting and crocheting and probably demonstrating spinning as well. Families and visitors are invited to get involved and enjoy what the platform gallery has to offer. It's only a couple of hours but people will enjoy what's going on even if they haven't had any experience with that before. Katrina Musson, 7 Spencer Golf News. A scam protection forum will be held at Port Perry Library next Tuesday night. The information night will work to educate the community on new online scams that are impacting the hip pockets of residents. Crime Prevention Police will be attending the evening and giving timely advice on how to avoid being fleeced. SA Police are coming here to the library and they'll be doing a session on scams and uh, how to protect yourself. They've done it before, they've done a brilliant job, so that's available to the public for free. The evening coincides with Internet Safety Day. COVID-19 sign-ins will be required for those interested in attending. Stay with us after the break. Our fishing experts will tell us what's biting in the Gulf this week. And Alex Sykes will have the latest weather details. Hello again. Time now to go around the Spencer Gulf and find out what's biting when we get in the boat or head to the local jetty. Here's our fishing experts with their tips for the weekend. G'day and welcome to this week's fishing tips from Port Augusta, Jewel of the North. The crabs are, are still there, uh, but you really have to pick through a lot of the small ones. On the plus side though, uh, line fishermen starting to get some nice flatheads out in those weedy banks over around the old number two bank and also around up in the, the uh, Port Patterson area. A couple of kingfish getting sighted around the place, generally a little bit smaller, none have been landed that I know of, but also do, do be aware there's a bit of a shark down there as well. Silver whiting as always at the moment over on the Flinders Channel out in those middle white sand banks at low tide. And that's all we have from the Jewel of the North. Welcome to another week around the Gulf Fishing Tips from Port Pirie. It's funny as always, every time we have opportunity where the fish just come on so fantastically, let me tell you there's plenty of things to do at this particular moment. We're starting around the Port Davis area, there's a lot of garfish around and salmon trout that you can work on just a little bit further out from the mouth. You'll also find blue swimmer crabs really, really well out there as moment, at this moment. Hopefully the wind will prevail and you'll make it out and we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Hi, Wallace Fishing Tips this week. Again, land-based, things are starting to heat up for the crabbing locally, right down towards Mount Young and further down south towards Cowlands Landing. Some good numbers of crabs are starting to come in. The boats are working the nice white holes there. Also along the foreshore, a few crabs are starting to be raked along there as well. A um, bit further around the coast, down towards the old bus, there's been some nice garfish still running down there, so get amongst them. Out on the boats, a little bit further out, some good numbers of garfish in the calmer areas around the same areas. G'day and welcome to Fishing Tips in Port Lincoln. We'll start locally in the bay and there have been some whiting around. There's still quite a few smaller kingfish in the 50 to 70 centimetre size range. Most of them have been taking soft plastics, um, but some are taking trolled lures and baits as well. So the town jetty, um, in the marina and just along the coastline in general, there's been a few little kingfish cruising around. Well, that's it for this week. We'll see you again with more tips next week. The weekend is almost upon us, so with a look ahead at what we can expect on the weather front, here's Alex Sykes with the details. Thanks John. Showers developed across the majority of the region today while temperatures remained warm. From 3pm, Port Augusta had a maximum of 29 degrees. It reached 32 in Broken Hill and Woodna was quite a bit cooler, recording a high of 19. Taking a look at the rest of the region now, Cooper Pedy had today's top temperature of 34. Whaler and Port Puri were both 26 degrees. Adelaide was 25 and it was a cool one in Port Lincoln with 17 the maximum there.
You can see on the satellite image that cloud is swirling over southern SA. A deepening low pressure system and associated cold front is causing gusty rain, heaviest in the southeast. The cloud crossing the north of the region in a trough is causing showers and a few storms, mainly in the far northeast. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now, and we'll start with the Gulf waters. Winds will be variable between 5 and 10 knots. Seas will peak below one metre with south to southwesterly swells rising to just above one metre. Showers and gusty winds will continue across the region tomorrow. Port Lincoln can expect a high of 21 degrees. Cleaver and Woodner will both have tops of 22. It will be mainly fine for Wyala and Port Augusta which will have 27 and 28 respectively. Showers and 25 for Kadena. Port Pirie showers and 26 similar conditions in Clare with 21 degrees there and Broken Hill should have a mostly sunny day with 27 degrees. Taking a look further through the week now, more strong winds are expected for Saturday with showers in the southeast of the region. Tops of 29 for Broken Hill and Cooper Pedy, 25 degrees in Wyala and Port Puri, Kadena and Woodner will have 24 and 22 degrees and showers for Port Lincoln and Adelaide. Showers will clear on Sunday with mostly sunny conditions expected throughout the day. 28 degrees for Port Augusta and Broken Hill, 26 for Woodner and Port Pirie, Wyala and Kadena tops of 25 degrees and 23 in Adelaide. Monday will be warm and sunny for the start of the week. 34 in Cooper Pedy, 30 degrees for Port Augusta and Port Pirie. Kadena will have 27 and a maximum of 25 for Adelaide. And that's all the weather from me for tonight. John, it's back to you. Thanks for that, Alex. And that's the local news this Thursday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later. And we will be back tomorrow at the special time of 6.30pm. Until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.